Are you a 28 mil shooter and perhaps looking to book some trips now the travel restrictions have ended? In this video, I'll give you my solution to a mini Lucky Q. Let's get into it. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLucky.com. So in today's video, we are looking at my solution to a mini Lucky Q. And I'll explain a bit more about my thoughts around that as we get into the video. The compact Leica CL with the Leica Almet TL 80mm 2.8 lens, which is a 28mm equivalent. The CL is 25% lighter than the Lucky Q and they both give you a 28mm fixed focal length assuming you're not going to change the lens on the CL. This is the first of three videos as I head out to Spain and I needed a small compact digital Leica camera. I was trying to weigh up all the possible options and I ended up with the Leica CL. Before we get into it let's quickly compare side by side basics between the Lucky Q and the Lucky CL. So first off both cameras are 24 megapixel digital mirrorless cameras. The main difference is the Lucky Q is full frame and the Lucky CL is APS-C with a 1.5 crop. The Lucky CL weighs in at 483 grams or 17 ounces with lens versus the Lucky Q which is 640 grams or 22.6 ounces with lens. Advantages of the Lucky CL it's smaller, it's lighter, it's interchangeable lens, which means if you do say shoot 80, 90%, 28mm, but then you perhaps want something longer as well as a second option, as a second lens, you do have the option to change the lens versus the Lucky Q, which is a fixed lens. And it's probably seen as both a pro and a con, but the pro of a APS-C camera, it means it will give you more range. So say you're doing landscape photography, if you put a 50mm lens on, that will then become a 75mm lens. So if you're using a full frame camera and a crop center camera, you get two lenses from every lens. So a 50 will then become 50 and 75, depending on which body you use it on. So I find that quite useful. Pros of the Lucky Q, it has the amazing Leica Simlux 28mm f1.7 as spherical lens and then combine that with both the full frame sensor and the fact that it's got IBIS and the CL doesn't have IBIS, the Lucky Q is going to give you much better low light performance and also a shallow depth of field for those of you that like the, the more bokeh look. Obviously you'll have to get quite close with a 28mm lens but it's easier to get bokeh with a 28 1.7 on a full frame sensor than a 28mm equivalent 2.8 on a crop sensor. Just for completeness, if you're like an M shooter, the best probably possible setup I would say is the Leica Elmerit 28mm f2.8 lens, which is a very compact lens as an M lens, but it's still a much bigger and heavier setup compared to the little Leica CL. Both these Leica Elmerit lenses are amazing, kind of as good as it gets from my eyes, so you're not going to go far wrong with either lens, but if you want something smaller, stay tuned because the Leica CL will do that for you. Okay, so to see what the Leica CL can do with the 80mm setup, I headed out to Spain and this is the first of three videos in Spain. So if you want to see all the videos, feel free to hit subscribe. As you can see from that clip, it was cycling related, hence I needed a small lightweight camera. David from the Escape Cycling Retreat here in Alicante in this 200 year old villa kindly reached out to me via YouTube and asked if I'd like to head up their cycling photography workshops but we'll offer non-cyclist photography workshops too for those of you that not into cycling. As you can see here I was using the Hasblad as well as the Leica CL. However, all images shot in this video are with the Leica CL and the 18mm kit lens. I still need to develop the film from the Hasselblad, but I was shooting with the 50mm which is the 28mm equivalent. Uh, this is the, the pool area and the barbecue area. And then, oh, this is me doing product shots with the Leica CL in their amazing kind of courtyard with lemon trees and then I'll switch in between various different cameras. If you like nice bikes the same as me, they offer both road cycling and mountain biking, so that way you can get to see pretty much all the, the local area, either by road or by tracks, so it's pretty impressive. And then even when you walk up the stairs inside, there's another bike mounted on the wall, which I thought was pretty cool. When we opened the sun canopy, we found this little bat hiding, and then he flew off. This is Jan that I met out on the road, who was while camping and working his way across Spain. And this is Joey and her boyfriend who are on their way to Portugal by bike. One amazing photography gadget I can highly recommend and got to try for the first time in Spain was this Ultrapod. Um, it's an L-shaped bracket so you can attach it to things but also use it as a standard tripod. It's super lightweight so you can attach it to say the bike or something. And I looked on Amazon and they're about £25. Highly recommend it. I'm definitely going to order one for myself. Just for the fact that it's so easy to attach to railings and stuff like that. Here's the size next to my jobby tripod that I use a lot. And here's me using it in action for some behind the scenes footage where I just attached it to a road sign. And then you can see me doing some like, B-roll and um, promo shots for the guys trying to take action shots with the, the Leica CL. 
a normal mini tripod wouldn't have worked because there was nothing high enough to get the angle. So awesome piece of kit. Oh, the second thing I got to try out was this. It sounds really simple. It's a bike tool bag, or it also uses like a sunglasses case. But as David showed me, you use it to make an excellent lens case. Uh, the Leica screw mount lenses I was also using were a bit too small, so I had to pack them out, but normal lenses would fit really well. It was then time to jump on the bikes again and head off to some more pretty mountain villages. Or oh, we passed this awesome uh, fast moving water because of the heavy rain that Spain had had before I arrived. And it made for some really good photos, both me getting photos of photos and photos. A uh, coffee stop being typical cyclists before we headed on to the next mountain village. So beautiful and the fountains, as you can see here, are really great for filling up your water bottles. Oh, this is a way you, the locals used to wash their clothes outside. And you can see quite how much rainfall they'd had in the area. Uh, I love these trees for photos. And here's another super beautiful old mountain village. I was using the Hasplad as well as the, the CL. And then we also found some, um, there's quite a few disused factories, which are awesome for taking pictures. If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> and then on to another village. They're all so pretty in the sunshine. It was just more of a decision whether to shoot a black and white film or colour film. But luckily I had a rucksack with me full of cameras. So I was using a mix of both. <laughs> this is on Tinient, the town closest to the villa. And it's really beautiful, both at sunrise and sunset. This is later in the day. We tried to catch the, the late sun before we headed back. And some mornings I was also running, hence I wanted a lightweight camera. So the Leica CL was perfect. Although on this particular morning I had a rucksack full, had the Hasplad and various others with me. Later in the week we drove to Valencia to the City of Arts and Science. And this place is absolutely amazing if you're a photographer or probably even if you're just a normal person. <laughs> uh, the CL was really good for kind of getting all my maybe test shots if you want to call it that as I tend to prefer film and then I was shooting the Hasplad and a like a 1C as well with film. I tend to prefer wider focal lens for architecture type shots so the 28mm equivalent on the Leica CL and also the 50mm on the Hasplad were perfect for kind of what I was seeing. Oh here's an action shot of me with the Hasplad and so for some of the CL shops I cropped them as a 6x6 because that's kind of how I was trying to preview what I was seeing ready to shoot it on the, the proper cameras with film <laughs> I always call film proper cameras uh, but yeah absolutely amazing place highly highly recommend this and it will be on our photo walk kind of workshops as one of the days so if you're interested definitely get in touch but up the stairs on the lower level there's even a botanical gardens on the top which <laughs> every corner that you turn was just like something more amazing to, to photograph uh, a very relaxing place for people and there was families, everybody was there. It was, it was such an awesome atmosphere. On the way back, while in the Valencia area, we also stopped at this kind of sleepy fishing port with uh, old style buildings and these cool kind of Asian maybe style boats. They definitely didn't look European, but they made for great photos. Okay, so to summarize, is the Mini Leica Q, AKA the Leica Sierra with 80 mil kit lens for you or are you better with the Leica Q? If we first consider the price point, if we're looking at camera bodies only, you can pick up a used Leica CL for around £1,250 and the Leica Q is around £1,750. I'll put the dollar values on the screen. The problem is you then need to buy a lens for the Leica CL to make it usable. So with lens, the Leica CL is actually going to be slightly more expensive than the Leica Q. But it is interchangeable, so then you can use all your amazing M lenses or R lenses or even Nikon lenses or any other classic vintage lenses on the Leica CL, where with the Leica Q, you are limited to the one lens. That's the main reason I've not bought the Leica Q because I've got a lot of lenses I like to play with, so I'd rather have interchangeable lens cameras, despite the Leica Q being amazing at what it does. If I shot weddings every day of the week, I'd probably buy a Leica Q or a Q2, but if you're a available light shooter and say you're going somewhere sunny on holiday and you're shooting in daylight, you don't need a shallow depth of field. You're doing like a typical travel photos where you want everything in focus. Maybe you're shooting at f5.6 or f8 all day in good light. Perhaps you're an LCD shooter and you're shooting at arm's length. You can use the touch screen to select your focus point or obviously use the EVF as I often do. And especially in bright conditions, an EVF is better. So of all my cameras and lenses, that's why I chose to take the Leica CL with the 18mm kit lens, autofocus kit lens with me to Spain. If you like these types of photos, stay tuned because there's two more videos coming. And as mentioned, we will be doing photo walk workshops, both cycling and non-cycling in the beautiful Alicante region of Spain. 
Check the link below for full information and there will be some dates being published in the coming weeks and months. Stay tuned for the next videos. Have a great day and a massive thanks as always to my patrons. Thanks for watching. Bye.